So I wanted to talk today about uh, one of the interesting steps where people have hiccups in relation to generalizing their recall commands. So what I mean by generalizing is we, we tend to teach this in uh, an austere or controlled environment where the distractions to the dog um, can be easily overshadowed by the importance of the cues that we give them and we can outcompete what's in our environment. But when we start moving uh, the recall into to other areas, we would call that generalizing. And so say from the home environment or the training environment into the park, into the, the shopping center car park, whatever. So um, a, great, a great way to do this is to make sure that inbuilt into your framework of, of communication with your dog, that you have ideally at least one informal cue to get attention from your dog and the way that I do that is to have an informal cue that indicates to the dog reliably hey there's something great going on over here so if you don't have that cue so just as an example I might go right at which point you can see in the background there snaps head turned around because I've been using that cue from puppyhood I tend to use discrete cues, so cues that require the dog to actively listen for them as, a, as opposed to um, the dog simply hearing them. And when I go out and begin to um, introduce the dog to these environments, in, in the context of building a recall, I never choose an environment that the dog is unfamiliar with. And I certainly want to choose an environment that the dog is comfortable in. So the way that I raise my puppies with the amount of environmental work that I do, it's, that's never really a problem for me. Um, there's always a laundry list of places that the dog is comfortable and less challenged, but still offer significantly more challenge than the area that I begin this training in. And so then, if I'm out in these environments, I can use that little cue that I did before, that little whistly cue, uh, and I can use that to gauge how strong the dog's interest is in the environment over me. So I can take the dog out to say a vacant car park and the dog's loving sniffing and I'm not too far from the dog and I can rip that cue out and I'll, now all of a sudden, if the dog doesn't attend to that cue, it's not a formal part of my obedience repertoire. And what that means is that um, there's significantly less problem for me if the dog is unresponsive to that cue because I'm not devaluing that cue. Whereas if I go out and start using my um, the cue that I intend to use for my formal recall, now what we wind up with is a situation where um, I'm devaluing that cue. And you see people do this all the time and you may do it yourself. Um, you see people going, come, 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 come. And that's part, that's part of the downfall of creating a reliable recall is that uh, the dog learns now okay so there's three cues to recall and I don't have to come so therefore just like a lot of words that come out of my owner's mouth those words don't uh, don't relate to me and they don't dictate that I should take a certain set of actions so um, that's something that's definitely worth considering if you're going to look to create off uh, reliable off-leash obedience with your dog and specifically the recall. Uh, the other, one other area that's sort of worth touching on is a lot of people teach their dog and do a reasonable job of it. They teach their dog that their, that the dog's name is a cue for attention. However, even in that environment, I would like to keep the dog's name up my sleeve because um, again, in, in terms of importance, the dog not paying attention to its name is of more importance to me than what it is for my dog to blow off that little tips, that little cue that I do just there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's of help to some of you guys. Uh, shout out to Ruth at um, C Spot Run in Chicago. She did a post along these lines and she inspired this post from me. That's my take on it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something that you will find that the majority of, um, 
of uh, more experienced positive reinforcement based trainers do in developing their own dogs and the dogs of their clients.